Hey YouTube, it's Roman, I'm back. And today what I wanna do is talk about Option Greeks and provide some intuition in the form of visualization of you know, what we're actually doing when we say we're you know, deriving the Greeks for, for some assumed model. I'm gonna disregard model-free pricing for now, though that's kind of an emerging field where we use you know, the volatility feature approach or some sort of neural network that may have access to a variety of models during training to produce a price. We're gonna, like I said, disregard sort of the forefront of model free pricing and just stick with the, the basic assumption that we're gonna assume an underlying process and a model to price these options. So for example, within this video, we're going to be assuming that the underlying equity is following geometric Brownian motion and that we are pricing options in a Black-Scholes framework. So fortunately for us, we have a Python library capable of producing a Black-Scholes price, and that is the QFIN library. So after you run a pip install QFIN, we can say from QFIN.options import Black-Scholes call. And this is going to be a class that takes all of the parameters for a, an option in a Black-Scholes framework. So we're going to be taking the time to maturity, the risk-free rate, volatility, the underlying spot price, and the strike price, all five of those parameters. So what does this look like? Let's create an example option. So we'll say option A is equal to black shoals call, and we are going to provide the spot price. So we'll just say it's 100. We're going to provide the volatility, so we'll say 30%. The strike price, which we'll also say is 100. The time to maturity in years, so we'll say one year. And then the risk-free rate, we'll just assume a zero rate. Now you'll notice that option A is actually a class. So we have access to the price by calling the price field. We say option A dot price, and it'll give us the price of our option in a Black-Scholes framework. Now, suppose we wanted to see how the option price changes with respect to the spot price. That is, we're fixing all of the other variables in this pricing equation. That's the volatility, the time to maturity, the strike price, and the risk free rate. And we're going to let the underlying spot price vary. So we can actually plot this very easily. So for starters, I'm also going to import NumPy as MP. And then I'm going to create a range of spots, so st for the spot at time t. We'll say mp.linspace, and we'll say from 60 to 110, generate 1,000 points. All right, very cool. Now we can actually create options for each of these prices. So I'm going to say options is equal to an empty list for i in range, and we'll do the length of s of t. We'll say options.append black shoals call and then s of t i for the spot price and then we're fixing the rest of the parameters. So 30% volatility, 100 strike, one year till expiration and zero rate. Then we will have a list of options. So we can actually get the price for each of these options by simply saying, let's just take the first one for example. So at 60, we'll say options zero. That's going to yield the option class. Then we can say dot price, and that'll give us the price of the option. Like I said, we can go ahead and plot this. So we're going to import matplotlib, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, run this guy. And then down here, we can create a list of option prices, or we can just iterate through the options. So let's do that. We'll say option prices is equal to an empty list. For option and options, we're going to append the price of the option to that list. And then we can go ahead and plot this by saying plt.plot. And we're going to plot the range of spot prices and then the option prices on the y-axis. And here is our option pricing function. So on the x-axis, we have the underlying price. And on the y-axis, we have the option price. Now, it's important to note that the chart that we're looking at right now is a two-dimensional representation where we're fixing the other four dimensions of this options price 
and looking at this slice through this multi-dimensional blob, okay? So this chart is subject to change when the other fixed parameters also change. For this same interval, we're simply looking at a slice when all of the other values are fixed. So, so let's make this a little more concrete. Let's actually take a point on this chart and, and see what we're looking at. So let's say we wanted to look at when the spot price is at 85. So we're going to say that O is equal to Black Scholes call. We'll pass 85 and then the rest of the parameters that we have fixed in the space. And then we'll say O.price. So if you look at this chart where we have the spot on the X axis and the option price in the Black Scholes framework on the Y axis, if we are to go from 85 up to the option price on the Y axis, you'll notice that it's going to be 5.0931, which is exactly what we get here. This, this is no surprise, right? This is exactly what this chart is plotting. So hopefully this makes it a little more concrete. All right, now suppose you are an options market maker, all right? And you actually have this derivative in your portfolio. You have this option, you bought it at this, you know, price 5.0931 and the spot is currently 85. And let's just say in a perfect world, the, the implied volatility is also 30% and the strike is 100 and all of these other parameters are fixed in space too. Let's just assume that those are fixed, okay? I'm going to ask a simple question. What can you expect this options value to change to when the underlying spot price increases by one? So essentially what I'm saying is what's going to happen to this options value when the spot goes from 85 to 86? That's exactly what the Greeks are for. That's exactly what we're going to do. Now, mathematically, what we're actually doing is taking the partial derivative of the model price with respect to the variable in question. So in this case, we are looking at delta. Delta is the partial derivative of the Black-Scholes call price with respect to the underlying asset. Fortunately, QFIN already has these built in to the option pricing model. The particularly keen viewer will notice that the partial derivative is a linear process where we have this nonlinear function, which means the partial derivative approximation for change is going to get worse the further away that we go from our initial point in question. And you're going to see all of this in a moment visually. So let's do this. Let's actually get the delta of the option. So we can say O dot delta. And the delta of the option is 0.3476. I'm going to round off to four decimal places. And what we can do is we can actually create a line on this chart to represent the delta function at this point. So let's do exactly this. We're going to say x is equal to mp.lin space 60 to 110. We'll do 1,000 points. And then we're going to say y minus 5.0931, that is the price at 85, is equal to the slope, which is our delta, 0.3476, times x minus 85. And then we can just go ahead and add that five to the other side. So this is just point slope form of a line plus five. Cool. And now we can actually plot this. So let's plot this and plot this. We'll do X and Y. And there we go. Now we have our linear approximation of change. So this is very cool where it all ties together in a visual sense. So what we did was we found delta at this point, 85, right? And we took this delta and created a line based on this point on our option pricing function. And we can see that the linear approximation for change gets worse the further you deviate away from that point. So if we were at 100, 
you can see that the gap between the two y values is significantly larger than say if we were at 85.5 or 86 which is exactly the point of delta and we can actually see this uh, mathematically quantitatively to see this mathematically what we can do is we can create two new options so we'll just call this option a is equal to black shoals call and we'll do 86 and then we'll use the rest of our fixed parameters from before and we will get the price and then we can compute the error between the linear approximation and the true price by saying new price is equal to 0.3476 times the change from 85 to 86, which is one. I'm essentially just plugging into this line that we created up here. So I can do that as 86 minus 85, if that's more clear. And then I'm going to add the original price, 5.0931. And then I'm gonna print this new price. And the pricing error, or the hedging error, is going to be the difference between these two, or the absolute difference between these two. So we can say mp.abs oa.price minus new price. And that is our pricing error, not too shabby for a linear approximation. We can also see the other end of the spectrum by looking at the price at 100 and seeing this massive difference as well. So let's do exactly that. We'll say option B is equal to Black Scholes call. We'll do 100, use the rest of our fixed parameters from before, and we will get the price. And then we can find the price based on this uh, linear approximation at, at this point, 85. So we'll say new price now is equal to 0.3476, so our original delta value at 85, times 100 minus 85 plus 5.0931, and we will print this new price. And now we can print the error the same as before, but instead use option B. And that is a significantly larger error. I mean, that is just, you know, multiple times, uh, multiple magnitudes uh, of multiple orders of 10 rather larger than the original pricing error. And it, it's very easy to see uh, visually. You know, you can see at 100 that this gap is significantly larger than the gap at say 86, which is practically tangent. So this is uh, again, not a surprise. This is exactly what we expected to see. So this idea that we did with the underlying equity value or the, the spot value of the equity can be extrapolated to the volatility, to the risk-free rate, to the time to maturity, and you're going to derive all of the Greeks. So delta is exactly what we did here with the underlying equity, where vega is doing this with the volatility, where theta is doing this with the time to maturity, rho is doing this with the risk-free rate, and the strike price is, is fixed, it doesn't change. So, you know, there is no Greek for, for the strike price. Um, but then the, the, next, the next level to this is that you can compute the second order sensitivities, which is the rate in which the rate of change changes. Uh, which is a, a little more difficult to, to visualize. You would actually have to visualize the delta function first, and then you can, um, you, you can essentially just redo this entire process just with the second order sensitivities. But this plot, instead of being the option price, it would be the option delta. And then you would find the tangency for the, uh, the second order sensitivity with, the with respect to the underlying, which is gamma. Uh, so, so this is a very, very deep sea, but this just scratches the surface and hope, hopefully provides some visual intuition to uh, the option Greeks. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'm going to be posting a research notebook on this topic on Quant Guild very shortly, so be on the lookout for that. 
Uh, also, stay on the lookout for our new courses launching very soon, Introduction to Python and Introduction to Quant Finance. Uh, we're going to be building some, some incredible topics uh, while leaving aside all of the fluff. We're going to be building these courses with, with just the essentials to get you in and out with the knowledge that you need to succeed. So thank you again for watching. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments below or shoot me an email if you have any suggestions for future videos or any topics that you'd like to see. Uh, feel free to check those out. Uh, check out quantguild.com. And other than that, I will see you in the next one.